All right, Algebra 1 Part A, folks. This is the last video in the series of Test 3 Review. I'm going to do 43 all the way to the end. Um, so let's just get this thing going so we can get it over with. Uh, the first question says 1.3 plus 2.5 equals 6.4. So I'm going to set it up. 1.3x, I should say. I'm going to draw my line here. Me, friend, friend to friend. So I need to subtract 2.5 because the opposite of subtraction or the opposite of addition is subtraction. Sorry. You end up with 3.9. I need to, this shows time, so I need to divide. X is equal to 3. So the answer to number 43 is B. The next one I'm going to look at is number 44. Very similar question. It's almost exactly the same. Well, it is the same in terms of content. 5.6x minus 3.8 is equal to 7.4. Draw your line. Me, friend, friend to friend. To get rid of minus 3.8, I need to add 3.8. I end up with 11.2. Now, this shows times, so I need to divide. and end up with the final answer of x is equal to 2. That's it. Pretty simple stuff for that one, so your answer to number 44 is A. The next one, which equation has no solution? Now the thing about this question is it's a kind of a longer one just because you need to do all of them if you don't find it pretty quickly um, in your guessing and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is combine all my terms together see if I'm eliminating any of my uh, variable terms and then look to see if I can make a statement that's not true. So I'm going to start with A. So I do 5W plus 8 minus W is equal to 7W minus 2 times the quantity W minus 4. Draw my line. I'm going to combine like terms. So 5 minus 1 gives me 4W. 7W negative 2 times W is negative 2W minus 4. 4 w plus 8 here. 7 minus 2 is 5w minus 4. Now here's the deal. If I subtract 5w here, I still have w left over. And all I have to work with is numbers, so I know this is not the right answer. If your variable stays, it's not no solution. So I'm going to mark this out and remind myself that, yeah, a is not the answer. For b, I'm going to add 4y to both sides. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. What I'm left with is a statement that says 7 is equal to negative 7. That's not true. So this is my no solution. Uh, on C, for instance, if I did 7 minus 1m, I'd end up with 6m over here. 5n over m over here, so I'm never going to get rid of it. So it's not one. In in this one, I would end up with 3v here and 3v here, but you have to add 3v to both sides, so you end up with 6v. It doesn't end that way either. It, none of these, except for the no solution one, were special cases anyway. You get number answers. So that's how you do it. Just solve them out. But when your variables eliminate, look at what's left over this is not true, it's no solution. If it was true, it would be all real numbers, identity, uh, infinitely many solutions, whatever you want to call it. 46, uh, same type of thing as before. We need to convert these all into decimals so we can make a comparison. Square root of 4, I know, is 2.0. This one's already 1. This is negative 0.5. Uh, 0.8 is already in form that I needed in. And 1.7 is square root of 3. Now I'm doing least to greatest here. If I'm doing least, that means I need to look at the smallest numbers first, smallest value of numbers. So I'm going to look at the negatives. And remember that the thing that is the most negative is the one that I need to put first. Can't compare the zeros here. F negative 5 is less than negative 2. The overall value, it's more negative. Like if I was on a number line between 0 and negative 1, negative 0 0.5 would be here. Well, negative 0. 2 would be here, which makes this more negative. So I was saying that this is my first one. So the one I should start out with, negative 1 half. Then you need to put your next uh, negative. 
so negative 0.2 would come next. All I need to do now is look at my positive numbers. So uh, in what I have left is 2.0, 1.7, and 0.8. And these I can do in regular order because they're positive. So the 0 is the next smallest, so 0 0.8 comes next. 1.7 is smaller than 2.0, so square root of 3. And then finally, a square root of 4, because 2 would be the biggest. So my answer to this one is B. And really, once again, if you knew that negative 1 half was the smallest, you were done with this problem if you thought about it. Number 47. I'm going to scroll up a little bit, see if I can get some more problems on a page. Number 47 says negative 8, uh, the quantity negative 8 plus 6R plus 3. Now it shows a uh, parenthesis, so you could potentially do distributive property if you want. You don't have to. I wouldn't, but you may need to do that just to get the parentheses out of your brain. Like I would just say, okay, these are like terms. There's nothing in front, so I'm going to put them together. But it might make your life easier to do this. It didn't change anything except how it looks visually, and that might be enough. These are my like terms. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5, so I'm looking for 6R minus 5, which is B. Now, this 6R and negative 5, the R comes first, but it doesn't matter. As long as the signs are the same, you're okay. Plus 6R, negative 5, so that's good. The answers are the same thing. Number 48. This is one that tripped a lot of people up, or this type of problem tripped a lot of people up on the last test because people forgot the negative in front of that D. So when you write it down, it might be a good idea to go ahead and put that negative 1 there. To get rid of me, friend, friend to friend, to get rid of plus 16, I subtract 16, end up with negative 10. What a lot of people would pick uh, last week was negative 10 is the answer. It's not. Divide by negative 1, because this shows times, D is equal to 10. So the answer to number 48 is D and not A. That's what made it difficult. 49, we've done about 7 million of them. But I'll do it because I said my plan was to do all of them. And this is the only week I'll be doing all of them. Twelve point one minus one point three is ten point eight. This shows multiply, I need to divide. And end up with x is equal to three. So the answer to number forty nine is D. Now it's time for number fifty. Number fifty is another one of those weird ones that has a fraction in it. But you will notice that the fraction is touching the x, and x isn't on top of 3. So what I'm going to do is think, OK, that's really a relationship related to times. So I'm going to make a little note to myself there. Me, friend, friend of friend. To get rid of minus 7, I need to add 7. By the way, in case you had no idea what I just did, this dot just means times. I'm just reminding myself. 6 plus 7 is 13. Now, for me, this says times one-third, so I need to divide one-third. Which you can certainly do in your calculator, just use the BC button or whatever. Uh, and 13 divided by one-third is the same as multiplying by 3, because in you know elementary school you did the old keep it, flip it, switch it, and, three time, and then you get a multiply question. So you end up with a final answer of positive 30. So the answer to number 50 is B. 51, I'm going to roll up the screen a little bit to get to. It's a word problem. If you need help reading the word problems on a test, just let us know. 51 says, John and f four friends, goodness, John and four friends are going out for pizza for lunch. They split one pizza and five large drinks. The pizza costs $10, and they spend a total of $17.25. So I know he had one pizza and five large drinks. So I'm going to put 5D here for drinks plus pizza equals uh, total cost, or in this case I'll say 17.25. Now I'm going to plug in the values that I know. I'm going to say uh, that the price of the pizza is $10, so I'll put plus 10 here. So minus 10, I don't know why I drew the line across there, 
you end up with uh, $7.25 for five drinks. I need to break it into five groups. D is equal to a dollar forty-five per drink. So number 51 is A. Do you have to use an equation there? Not necessarily. You could probably just figure it out. If you had 17.25 and you took 10 away because you already had to pay for the pizza, and then you would know to bust it up into five groups, you'd end up with a dollar forty-five anyway. But you generally they want you to start moving towards the idea of using an equation. But you know, whatever, it's your life. This is the value of what is the value of x over y? The hard part about this for most people is not necessarily that you couldn't do it. It's that you'll try to calculate the answer using a calculator and it may or may not go correctly. Now you could use keep it, flip it, switch it here, but I'd like to rethink the idea. X over Y as a fraction means divide. So I'm just going to do 10 over 7 divided by 5 over 3. And I just put the parentheses in there to make a visual statement about them being the top and bottom of the fraction. You don't have to actually type in the uh, parentheses if you don't want to. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me move this over. My calculator works a little different maybe than the one you're used than the one you're using in class, but it is what it is. Um, so I'm going to go in and type in 10 over 7. I'm going to click out, and then I'm going to divide by 5 over 3. So it means the same thing as um, 10 over 7 with a fraction bar 5 over 3 because this looks really scary and I don't even really know what it means. I mean I know what it's supposed to mean but it is what it is. But if you just type it in like this you'll get an answer of 6 over 7 so your answer is B for this one. Or you could always do the old keep it, flip it, switch it, because it's a division question. You're dividing by a um, fraction. So you could do keep it, flip it, switch it. Uh, 10 times 3 is 30. 7 times 5 is 35. And it reduces to 6 over 7. Whatever you want to do is fine. I just wanted to show you that all those opportunities were there for you. For the next one, Next to last one, I think. No, I've got two more after that. So this one says evaluate u plus x times y, and they give you all the variable numbers. So I'm going to write down u plus xy. I'm going to put parentheses around this one to remind myself that it's multiply. Otherwise, the calculator does weird things. So I'll do u's value is 13 plus 2 times 6. Well, I know that 2 times 6 is 12. 13 plus 6 is 25. So my answer is here. But if you don't do it and you wrote down um, 13 plus 2, 6, when x and y touch, it doesn't mean that those are the numbers. It means that they're multiplying. So make sure you have something in your calculator, if you're doing it via calculator, that shows multiplying. If you're doing it in your head, make sure you have something in your head that shows multiply. Otherwise, it's, it's a disaster. So that's number 53. Um, number 54 is a distributive property question. Really not a very difficult one unless you forget to write something down to remind yourself it's negative 1 in front. Then it's negative 1 times negative 2. You get 2g. Negative 1 times 5 and gives you minus 5d. So I end up with b, the answer. Not a big deal. The last one is another one of those plug-in things. U over Z plus X, Y to the third. Now I'm going to put this thing in parentheses. It makes my life easier. So for U over Z, I'm going to do 20 over 4 plus X value of 5. My Y value is 4 to the third power. And I'm going to show you how I type it in. And you don't have to do it all in one big swoop. You can do it in groups. That works, too. And, of course, I've dropped the calculator out, so hold on one second. There it is. Um, so I'm going to go into mine, and it'll tell me something in about shortcut menus or whatnot. So I'm going to go in and type in 20 over 4. You can just use the BC button if you have the TS-73. Plus 5 parentheses 4 there is the button to go to the third power. Looks like a little 
up you know, like a little arrow pointing up click out of it close your parentheses hit enter and you get a final answer of 325 which is the correct answer for this one you could also work it out 20 divided by 4 is 5 4 to the third power is 64 65 at least I think it is 4 to the third power yeah it's 64 times 5 gives you 320 plus 5 more gives you 325 so that's it not a huge deal uh, to get all these right so hopefully this was helpful for you if you need anything else let me know before the test tomorrow so good luck everyone